Hey everyone, Draco Magnus here for another 0.5 episode of Virtue's Last Reward. We are here in the treatment room covering the gold file from said room. Without further ado, let's get started with the treatment pod. An amazing machine that augments an individual's natural ability to heal, strengthens their immune system, accelerates their meta metabolism, and can cure many otherwise incurable diseases. In addition, it can create a per uh, fumble. It can create personalized medicine. Fumble again. <clears throat> In addition, it can create personalized medicines, perform gene therapy, and even repair the effect of radiation damage. What an incredible machine! Yet it can't cure Radical Six. It is not that incredible if it can't cure Radical Six. You say? Wow, that was poignant. <laughs> yes. Well, I guess you got a point. But don't worry. It also has a function called cold sleep. Cold sleep uses CAS, freezing, to freeze the entire body without damaging it. That way, even if the disease you have can't be cured, you can be frozen until a cure is found. Neat. So there wasn't a reason to not let him freeze, but that's fine. Cold sleep. There are generally two types of cold sleep. The first involves lowering your internal body temperature. This reduces your basal metabolic rate and induces a state similar to hibernation. In other words, your body is still actively functioning, just very slowly. The other sort of cold sleep is the one in this game. This involves freezing your body to essentially lock it in whatever state it is it was in. Until recently, this was impossible. But the expansion and crystallization that took place during the freezing process irrevocably damages the human... Wait, what? Until recently, this was impossible because the expansion and crystallization that took place during the freezing process irrevocably damaged human tissue. In the world where this game takes place, however, CAS technology has overcome this hurdle, making cryonics a reality. The resurrection uh, resuscitation rate is nearly 100%. In fact, you'd be much more likely to die in a plane crash which means that freezing yourself to visit the future is safer than flying from Tokyo to Milan. Neat! Okay, so there is some risk, but there, it isn't a big risk, apparently. Moving forward to CAS. CAS stands for Cells Alive System. It allows organic tissue to be safely and non-destructively frozen. In this game, CAS is used to put people in cold sleep. It supercools the subject with a magnetic field and causes them to freeze almost instantly, preventing crystallization. In real life, the problem comes when you try to thaw someone out, which also must be done instantly. In this game, however, the technology, the technological magic of the treatment pod makes returning from cold sleep possible. The past two nonary games. November 2018. 16 children were reported missing. In actuality, 18 children were taken, but two were never reported. The person in charge was someone we will refer to as H. The purpose of this game was to conduct experiments on morphic resonance with the, child, uh, with the children as test subjects. I won't go into the specifics here, but the short version is that this was the first nonary game. November 1st, 2027. A total of nine people participated in this session. They were abducted just as the children had been, but this time, each was not in charge of the game. Clover was a participant in both games, and now she finds herself playing the nonary game yet again. Esper Resonance In the context of this game, espers are people with the ability to access the morphogenic field. An Esper can increase the strength of their signal by being close in close fumble. An Esper can increase the strength of their signal by being in close proximity to other Espers, assuming they are uh, fumble, assuming they are the strongest. The strongest signal will absorb any weak ones nearby and uses them to amplify its own strength. Sort of like waves, the biggest wave adds the amplitude of the smaller waves to its own to cover them up. Right, that's coming back to me now. I knew psychics had to do, do something with this game, but I didn't remember exactly what. Well, the game series, I should say. Nonary Veterans. 
The following nine people were participants in the nonary game that Clover claims to have been a part of. Ace, middle-aged man, and also the person who ran the first nonary game. Snake, Clover's older brother, real name, Light, last name Yagami. I'm kidding, that's not right at all, but still. Every time I see a name Light, I think Light Yagami. Anyway, Santa, arrogant, uncooperative, young man. Clover, still Clover, just younger and with a jacket. That's not wrong. Junpei, hero of nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. Meta. June, Junpei's childhood friend. Real name, Akane Kuroshiki. Also, I th if I'm remembering correctly, she was responsible for the second nonary game? That sounds right. Anywho, seven, amnesthetic, amnesiatic. I feel like those should be the correct words, but it's amnesic detective. Lotus, attractive programmer, has two daughters. I'm pretty sure Lotus is Alice, but I could be wrong. And ninth, Kubota, skittish man, gets blown up. Accurate. Also, I think he had something to do with the first nonary game as well. Oh, and the numbers next to him are actually the numbers they were in the game. Ace was one, Snake was two, for Snake Eyes, three was Santa for some reason, don't remember why, Clover, four, self-explanatory, Junpei is five, uh, actually, no, I don't think there was a reason, Junpei is his actual name, and June kind of just, you know, ruined that for him by saying his name in front of everyone. June is the sixth month, so that's where that comes from, seven, seven, self-explanatory, Lotus is eight. I forget exactly why. I feel like lotus flowers have eight petals, but that could be me being wrong. And Kubota didn't give a shit about any of that and blew himself up at the beginning. Because he's an asshole. Anyway, last but certainly not least, we have Neostigmine. A type of carbamate... Uh, carbamate? Carbamate. A type of carbamate compound which acts as a reversible... Oh boy. Ace Tyclo Ace Tylclonine Sterase Inhibitor. Allowing the parasynthetic nerve. Exciting the parasynthetic nerve. This allows it to counteract the effects of the muscle relaxant Tubocurine. This can be delivered with an injection gun like the one you see here. So that's how we live after dying in one of the different timelines. Okay. Well, it's a good thing we figured that out. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, we end this point five episode here. Sorry about all the fumbles. See you guys in the actual episode. Oh